This is a non-points event for cars that failed to qualify for this year's running of the Cariola Grand Prix. Aside from the front row, which consists of Cameron Taylor and Zach Duff, the entire field was set by a lotto. So it'll be a, so it is a random draw for the starting lineup outside of the front row. Joe Lennick and Rip Tyler in row two. Matthias Taub and Danny Sauvin in row three. Neither of those cars qualified for the Cariola Grand Prix. Taub was just eliminated from qualifying at the very end of it. Mika Turbo, one of the FinTech cars out. You see Jay Rivers making his first start. Uh, not really his first start, but uh, since he hasn't started a points race. Robert Dorian, a bit of a surprise to have missed the race in the alert car, but he had some off tra he had some problems keeping the car on the road and qualifying. Kellen Rogers sort of in the same boat. Uh, Brandon LaRoe and Tom Moore, both of the both of the DeGarmo cars out. Rachel Rains from the 31 car had some engine problems, kept her from qualifying. Darren Cardella is driving uh, Arto Kekkonen's backup car from this race two years ago. And there is the entire grid of 30 that will start this consolation race. A lot of drivers we may not have heard of, but a lot of those cars came very close to actually making it into the race. As Cameron Taylor leads the field, gets the field off the line. Zach Duff uh, gets a better start than Taylor. Matthias Tau peeks out. That's Rip Tyler in that, in that bright green car, the former uh, the former uh, FARC champion there, the 161 car. Joe Lennick, D Daniel Melrose peeking through. Uh, trying to make some uh, some headway along with a thing that was Dorian in the background that was uh, trying to make up some ground in the uh, 211 car. Coming now towards Sorolla Park as Duff begins to pull away. Joe Lennick in the 23 trying to make some headway here. He's trying to muscle Danny uh, muscle past Danny Sovin after losing some ground in the first couple of corners. Oh, contact with Russell Jones and Mika Turbo and all three of them into the wall. That gorgeous 216 car is written off fairly quick, as is the FinTech car of Turvo. There's one FinTech car that actually qualified for a Cariola, and surprisingly it wasn't Turvo. It looked like Jones just overshot that, and Jay Rivers in trouble in the background in the Blue Jay car. Um, Ryan Grumboard with Ryan Griffin, that's Tatinen. There's Rivers right in front of him. Oh, Rivers looks like he got uh, into the back of Robert Dorian. And, uh, but when he uh, looked like when Rivers will lift it off the throttle, may have lost the car, may have lost control of it. So, Jay Rivers, very inexperienced, uh, but uh, he's going to get that car back underway, get himself some seat time, uh, even though uh, more or less all for naught. But uh, uh, it's good to see Jay Rivers making the grid here in that 164 car. Wyatt Castle in the 224 car is a big crowd draw when he made his Master Cup debut at Decatur. Oh, he's sliding wide. He's into the power team car of Lodi. The Euro team car, uh, apologies. And uh, into the tire wall goes the Euro team car of Emmanuel Lodi and Wyatt Castle. The Unit 11 car of Mark Blackwell also off in the Dwyer S. There's been a lot of drama over here. And that's one of the trickiest corners on this circuit. At the completion of the first lap, Zach Duff in the 77 has a fairly solid lead over Cameron Taylor in the 26. This is a great, um, great run so far from Duff. A little surprised he uh, he didn't uh, retain his full-time role at the Mitchell and Sons team. Uh, but then again, Oxalando Shun had just won the TM Lights title. This was the quickest car in practice for this race. Was the uh, the number 90 Olivia Grace car driven by uh, Canada's Kellen Rogers, the uh, Dash Cup regular. Uh, in this 90 car. It's the second car for the Matthews team, and uh, considering that Ryan Matthews quite easily qualified his car, um, the uh, backup Aspira uh, just missed it by, uh, didn't miss it by very much. Here's Rachel Rainsford in the 31 car, which was also very, very quick in, um, in the uh, practice sessions leading up to this race. And uh, also, I was a little surprised Rachel didn't put this car on the grid for the Cariola Grand Prix proper, so that's a bit of a surprise. Oscar Clemens in the 353 car has tried to make this race for, a, to try to make the Cariola GP for a few years, has not done so. Uh, but we do understand he may have a promoter's option when the series returns to Germany, but he's going three wide with Benoit Vukler and uh, Rip Tyler. So Vukler clears Rip Tyler. Here comes Oscar Clemens, though. He says, hey, I can get a two-for-one deal. I can go around Benoit Vukler and Rip Tyler, and he's got it. Great a great move there by uh, the German. Uh, he looks a very savvy race driver. It's a, it's a shame we haven't actually gotten to see him in a Master Cup Series race yet. Dorian now on the on his way through using, um, 
using a hole there that Clemens created to try to get by both Vukler and Tyler in the alert Inglesby. It looks like he's got it. So Robert Dorian, yep, uh, is moving up position. He uh, was scored eighth last time by, so that's at least a him up to sixth right now. So Dorian, now he's going to chase down Anskar Clemens, who is now up into fifth position. Uh, you see Duff continuing to pull away a little bit as uh, everyone pretty much uh, single file right now, but that'll change in a little bit. This race is 21 laps long, and we are, and uh, the series officials didn't fill everyone's um, fuel tank up all the way on purpose. Here's Craig Mummert in the 114 special paint job on the MT Motorsports car. He's having a bit of problems controlling it. Sinconen and Cardell, though, they're going to split them. Sinconen's going through in the 157 car, and he's going to go through. Cardell was taken a bit by surprise there. I don't think Cardell saw that one coming in the uh, Ferdinand car. And uh, behind Cardell is uh, Tom Moore, is Radimir Stanyachev in the Altoris car is coming into the pits. The Altoris GP car. Uh, they had a couple of cars try to qualify. Stanyachev was easily the fastest of them. Here is Zach Webster, the third driver for Power Sting Incorporated, who's in this who's in this race. It was actually supposed to be Jose Luis Martinez in this race, who drives the third Lennard, but that caught an engine failure and uh, Webster was put in this race instead. Um, in this 32 car, we expect to see more of him later this year. Here is the uh, Kellen Rogers car, who is just flying through this field along with the 31 of Rachel Rainsford. There's Rachel in the background, you see peeking out in that white car, but uh, Kellen Rogers, I think due to her quali due to the, uh, her starting position, might have a, oh! Now, might have a better opportunity to um, make some serious headway. Uh, the Matthews Motorsports cars have actually been working a lot. Both Kellen Rogers and Ryan Matthews have been working quite a bit on fuel economy, and considering that the Carella Grand Prix is a long race, that'll probably pay dividends there. Webster now on Agano, or Pagano, sorry. Bit of a, it's been a typo on his name uh, for parts of the uh, uh, TM Light Series season so far. And... Uh, uh, that's a, a bit of a, that's a little hard to unlearn, as you might have noticed. Uh, Rachel Rains for in the meantime, getting around Bigsby Foot in the 31. She has also set fastest lap of the race, so uh, she didn't have a whole lot of time to get to the front. Better hurry up. Clemens and Melrose now doing battle here. As uh, uh, Clemens in the 353, going around Melrose in the 67, who, uh, if memory serves me right, actually made this race last year. Made the uh, Cariola Grand Prix last year. Uh, he didn't this year, however. Uh, here is Benoit Vukler. Tutino has never scored a top 10 in anything. Oh! That was a jinx. Tatinen got in the back of him there. Sent Vukler into the tire wall and out of the race. So Tutino hasn't scored a top 10 yet in anything, and that streak is going to continue. It looked like he was going to break that, actually. Dorian and Melrose continue to do battle here. Melrose holds him off in the 67. Dorian... Is gonna have to uh, find a better. Is gonna have to find a better chance to get by the very savvy Australian, Mad Uncle, Mad Uncle Melrose. Holds shot, throws a block on Dorian. That was a bit late, but that's gonna give Dorian the, the inside lane coming through here. But the uh, pay, the uh, pavement on the inside of that turn isn't exactly in the best shape. Melrose continues to hold him off. Great driving here by Daniel Melrose to hold off a car that is probably uh, half a second quicker. I don't think this is going to be... I think Melrose may have to give it up here because it's a pretty long straight here. And um, if you've got a faster car, the easiest place to pass somebody is at the end of a long straightaway. Melrose throws the brakes in very late. So does Dorian. But, yeah, Melrose off. Just almost off the track. Uh, Dorian finally gets through. Clemens has caught the back of Taub in the 21 car. Adias Taub, a former winner of this race. Um, of course... Not making the not making the grid this year. Uh, a little surprisingly, his teammate Peter Short was able to do so. But Anscar Clemens goes right by Taub and is going to move his way up into third. Or uh, he's going to move his going to move his way up into third. He's going to start to challenge uh, Cameron Taylor. So the German really flying right now in uh, the 353 car. In the meantime, it's a bit of a Saturday drive for Zach Duff in the 77. He's uh, more or less pulled away from Taylor and um, not a whole lot's really going on with him. So let's look to see where something actually is happening. Here's Robert Dorian and Matthias Taub doing battle. 
Dorian in the 211. Looks like, um, yeah, it doesn't look like Taub is going to quite put up as much of a fight as Melrose. I think uh, Taub defended the other lane, and uh, now Dorian's got uh, not not exactly the preferred line, so Taub might be able to hold him off here. Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, uh, Dorian, no, oh, maybe Dorian isn't going to be able to get him. No, they're still side by side. But you see, though, in the background, Kellen Rodgers making some headway. Dorian gets Taub right before the IRS. And it looks like, uh, let's see if Kellen Rodgers make the move, made the move on Melrose stick. No, not quite. Daniel Melrose being a bit more aggressive with defending than Taub is. Here's Rodgers in the 90 car. Trying to make a move on the inside of Melrose. Uh, no, not, no, Rodgers loses the rear end just a little bit. Uh, and uh, Melrose going to hang on. Uh, that's not exactly the best corner to make a passing move in. Zach Duff in the 77 brings that car into the pits. He's got a fairly solid lead. And Cameron Taylor and, uh, looks like most... Oh, Dorian's staying out an extra lap. Ah! So is Kellen Riders and so is Rachel! And Esco Cascella in the background as well in the, in the uh, 235 car. Oh, whoa, we got a disastrous pit stop here for the 77 car disastrous pit stop there they couldn't get the right rear off of that car Cameron Taylor is going to take the effective lead of the race so Cameron Taylor now moves up to the lead Duff horrible pit stop there the Mitchell and Sons team is going to be kicking themselves for that Dorian now is going to pit on lap 10 uh, uh, so uh, so Dorian is in Rachel Rainsford I think might be coming in yes but you'll notice there's no green 90 car there because Kellen Rogers is still on the circuit Kellen Rodgers in car number nine. He's still in the circuit now. And I mentioned earlier that um, series officials didn't exactly fill everyone's uh, fuel tank up all the way. Uh, they wanted to force a two-stop. The officials wanted to force this to be a two-stop race. But uh, we've got this is going to be at the end of lap 11 when Rodgers makes a pit stop. Do the math. It's 21 laps. Rodgers can do it on one stop. It's, um, it's almost a certainty. Rachel Rainsford in the 31, leaving the pits. Where is she going to come? Whoa! Right in front of the Melrose cars. Rachel moves. Is going to is going to gain quite a bit of ground there. So Rachel Rainsford is going to have to be is going to have to play it smart with fuel if she's going to make it to the end. I think she will. We'll have to see. But Rachel Rainsford is still probably the best drive I've ever seen her give in. Here is Rogers now into the pits in the 90 car. Pretty error-free so far. Here is Cameron Taylor, though. In the 26 car who currently holds the effective lead of the race. But there's Robert Dorian in the background. Remains to see how long it will last. And not only that, but you have to consider um, what Kellen Rogers in the 90 car, what her strategy appears to be so far. So Taylor now coming down the main straightaway. No relation to um, former series champion Matt Taylor who um, uh, was supposed to attempt this race, but the uh, but the car that he had blew an engine in first practice never actually turned to lap in qualifying as Darren Cardell makes a bold move on Oscar Clemens, who also had a disastrous pit stop. Darren Cardell in the Ferdinand car. I'm not sure they changed tires on that car. And, um, and whoa, Taub is in trouble. Taub in the 21. No! That was almost a big, big crash right there. So Taub, he's struggling with the handle of that car. Here's Rip Tyler in the 161 car, the uh, former FARC champion uh, back in the States. Um, he is uh, very, very skilled on the short tracks, is Rip Tyler. Uh, he is uh, dropped well back, though, in his, uh, in his very old Lycoia. As Rachel Rainsford and Zach Webster do battle, Webster a bit braver than Rachel, swings it around the outside, and Rachel kind of gave that one up. I don't really know why she did that unless she's unless she's trying to save fuel to make it to the end but even still she has to be ahead of Kellen Rogers in the 90 car to do that and uh, Rogers I do believe is in front of Rachel on the racetrack so that's not exactly going to um, sit too well Rachel Rainsford has never won a Master Cup Series race before championship or non-championship as Esco Cascella makes a move around Duff on the outside in the EK2 car his team car made it into the top 10 in qualifying for the Carriola Grand Prix, but Cascella himself missed the field. However, he's determined. Look at that! Cascella dive bombing the dive bombing the mallet corner as Kellen Rodgers is a bit slow, but I think Rodgers is 
either trying to make it all the way on fuel or what, but or maybe or maybe they uh, don't think they got all the fuel in on the Matthews car. But now Dorian on the inside of Rogers as Cascella try is gonna try to make a run at the uh, race lead now. Uh, he's gonna try to run down Cameron Taylor as uh, Dorian now moves past the 90 car and uh, of uh, Rogers as Duff tries to mount a challenge now on Rogers. Rachel Rainsford a ways behind this. As uh, uh, Rogers skates that car around, Duff pokes his nose on the inside, almost contact there. Rogers almost makes a swipe at him. Uh, so Duff, put, yeah, Duff throws it to the inside. Kellen Rogers is gonna hold it to the out, is gonna hold it around the outside there. There's uh, that curb, not exactly the best place to make a move. Uh, that curb has caught quite a few people out. It's now Cardell and uh, Rachel Rainsford now doing battle. Cars 31 and 152. Uh, Darren Cardell, a lot of people think that's essentially an R&D car for the Gessler Richter team, for which Rachel's younger sister, younger and far more successful sister Alexis drives. Uh, Rachel Rainsford in that 31 car doing a better job at defending here. And uh, the two Ra the two Rainsford sisters, um, half sisters, if you would, uh, which is a bit more correct, couldn't be more further apart in their uh, driving style, which I've always thought was a bit interesting. Uh, Zach Duff uh, is making a move here on Kellen Rogers in the 90 car as this race begins to wind down. Cameron Taylor, who is oh, Cameron Taylor is coming into the pits. That that's a bit early. I wonder if Cameron Taylor is trying to minimize the amount of time he's in the pits by just doing fuel. Ah, Cascella is in as well. I think Cascella is thinking the same thing. Pit right now. Minimize the amount of time you're in the pits. Uh, and try to cut the last stint in half. That, uh, well, some, some people thought that that would work really well during the round of Sweden. And it really didn't. I guess they didn't think they were going to make it on fuel anyway and figured it wasn't worth the risk. So even though this doesn't pay points, it does pay money. Uh, as you see, Robert Dorian in the 211 car uh, now holding the lead, and it looks like he may be trying to go the whole way. Zach Duff is going to be running second with Rogers in third. As uh, uh, there is Zach Duff in the uh, 77 car, who looks like he's hit the pit lane. I don't see the 211 car in yet. Yeah, nope. Here comes Robert Dorian, last year's Dash Cup champion. So Robert Dorian has been keeping himself active. As now Rachel Rainsford does battle with... No, Rachel's coming into the pits, actually. Uh, that seems like they called Rachel in very late. But Kellen Rogers in the 90 car. Looks like Rogers is going to make it work. Kellen Rogers rounds the final corner for the last time. Kellen Rogers one stops, saves enough fuel. And Kellen Rogers is going to do it. Rogers wins the consolation race at, here at Cariala by doing one less pit stop than everyone else in the field. Pat on the back to Kellen Rogers for that, because that was a fairly impressive drive. But this is only the prelude to the big race tomorrow, the 38th running of the Cariola Grand Prix.